welcome. This is Mabbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. Welcome to episode 53 of Mabbit Marketing, everybody. This is actually our official, we've been going for a year for our podcast episode. And that's super exciting to me, uh, partly because I love hosting this podcast. It's also super exciting to me because I have a track record. I've got ADHD and I have a track record of starting things and then running out of path and not doing them. And so for me to still be energized and excited after a year, for me as a personal victory, but really it's because so many of you inspire me and spur me on. You you give me the beautiful feedback. You um, tell me things you love about the podcast. You've come and joined our group. Some of you I've even get to work with. And I want to say thank you to anyone that has listened over the last 52, 53 episodes. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. I thought that because I've been doing podcasting for a year, I wanted to do an episode about why I chose podcasting as part of our marketing journey and also how you would start to do a podcast if you were doing one yourself. Now, I'm going to share with you my way of doing things. And there are many different ways that we can start a podcast, maintain a podcast. I've been a guest on people's podcasts. I'd love to be a guest, by the way, on your podcast, if you have one, if I'm a fit. Um, But I want to talk to you a little bit about how I do it to help you walk through and be prepared for it. This was not my first podcast. This is not the first one that I ever did. I had another one called Time to Identify that had like eight episodes it was, it, I had great guests, but besides the guests, it was a little bit shit, to be honest. And I also had for a while a little video cast, a video of vodcast, I don't know, um, but that kind of got stopped during, um, and I loved it. I loved it. It was just using YouTube, but that one got stopped because of COVID. So this was my chance to really do something that I made a commitment to. It was really my third go on podcasting. So this episode, we are going to be talking about how to get started in podcasting, what I did to prepare, how I run my podcast, all the bits and pieces that I do, and what impact it's had on our business. So I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. I hope that you come along and listen to the journey. And like any other episode, if you have questions or want to talk about this today, um, come along to our group, Map It Marketing on Facebook. You can come and ask questions about anything about marketing or small business in your in that group. And in fact, a lot of the things I'm talking about today in this podcast came from that. Now, before we jump into the podcast, I do want to do another little advertisement, um, an advertorial, if you may. Um, my book, Be a Spider Builder Web, all about content marketing, is coming out mid June. And I have a competition at the moment. It does draw on the 18th of May, 2022. So if you're listening to this a couple months away, I'm sorry, the competition is closed. Of course, you can buy my bookstore. So this is all to win a copy. I've got 10 copies to give away and one person will get a one-on-one session with me to create their content strategy or help them with their content strategy. So I would love it if you came and um, joined our Facebook group, but especially check the show notes, come and enter for one of those books and you'll be one of the first in the world to get a copy of Be a Spider Builder Web when it comes out in June. All right, let's get started. So let's start with why did I do a podcast? Now, let's be honest, part of it is because I like to talk. I do like to talk and I'm an introvert and COVID-19 has made it tricky. Um, I'm a parent, so, you know, like I've got teenagers, which means they no longer really want to listen to me talking to them all the time. And I have all these words that I need to get out. So a podcast fits really well with that. The other reason I wanted to do a podcast is I started my career as a writer and I still love to write, but I felt that often because I'm doing so much writing for my job that I had lost that kind of love of being able to spontaneously write. And hilariously, since then, I have actually, you know, been doing weekly uh, columns for stuff.co.nz and I also have written a book. So obviously writing isn't something I've stopped, but I really liked that audio form. 
I worked as a writer before I became a marketer and a lot of it was me was interviewing other people so uh, for me, having the podcast was an opportunity for me to sit alongside people that I really liked, or admired, or people who made me curious and ask them questions and get to use that journalistic side that I really hadn't had an opportunity to use outside of asking questions during a marketing strategy. So that was part of it. I also wanted to use podcasts because I am very aware that people learn in different ways. And whereas I like to learn through writing, I was increasingly starting to learn more myself through podcasts. I was increasingly starting to listen to a lot of podcasts, listen to a lot of more audio books, and realizing that that was a much more achievable way for me to listen and learn for more information. So it gave me an opportunity to be able to use a new format for that. So that's why I did a podcast. There are some other things in there, though. Uh, you know, like I will be very open about our stats. When we launched last year, uh, and I don't know, um, apparently our stats are relatively good for New Zealand stats in terms of like how many listeners we get. But when we launched, we immediately had sort of around 200 a week people listening, quickly grew to around 230 or 40. And currently it sits between 290 to 320 a week people doing a download. Now they may not all download the same episode. So often people who are new will download one episode and then go and listen to a whole bunch. I do exactly the same when I've discovered a new podcast. My goal, current goal is to get 500 downloads a week. And in the ballpark of that, you know, like um, Dom Harvey, who's got, you know, as a radio presenter, it took me, I think 10, maybe 10 months to get to nine or 10 months to get to 10,000 downloads. He had like 10,000 downloads in six weeks or something like that. So, you know, in the realm of it, it's not a huge podcast yet. I also know from other podcasts in my area, some of them are getting 50 or 60 downloads and, and it doesn't matter. Like those numbers aren't important really in terms of, for me, the value of it. But the way I see it, this is even if it was 60, but we've, I've got 290, Imagine at the moment, like it's hard for me with Omicron and with all those sort of things, even just the fact that I'm an introvert and I've got a work and busy things to do, to get in front of 290 people a week. Imagine if I was standing in a room with 290 people in that room listening to me and listening to my guests and learning about marketing, the organizational methods of run events to actually make that happen every week would just not give me opportunity to do anything else in my business. So for me, a podcast is a really great way to share your content, share your information in a way that's deeply accessible. People can pick and choose to use it and it helps people who may not be readers to audio to process and learn. Uh, and to me, as someone who's committed to people who are learning in different ways, that would be the key reason. And I would do that even if it wasn't 200. It's nice to have those numbers and to see those numbers grow. But even if it was 60 or 80 people, that still would be the same, that that is a reason to do it. Um, it's not so much for social proof and things like that for me. It's really about that area of serving in, and I hope that that is reflected in the content we do. So in terms of deciding this podcast, and, and keeping in mind that it had a pretty terrible podcast the first time I did one, this time I was really serious about this. I ran out a path. I read a statistic that said that the vast majority of podcasts don't last after the eighth episode, and I was like, that's not going to happen to me. Um, and so some of the things I did to prepare is I listened to a lot of podcasts and worked out what I liked. So even like my first intro was modeled on about three different podcasts, other marketers podcasts of what they had done. I listened to their format and wrote notes about how they did things and what questions they asked and what prep they seemed to be doing. I had a note of what calls to actions and what resources they tended to share. I wrote down and researched before I did the podcast to really seriously think about it. So I did a lot of that. I also went and found out what it took to create my podcast. And I will be upfront here. One of the things I realized was for me to be able to do this podcast is I would need to have help. I can do technical stuff. I edit my own videos sometimes quite badly, but I, I struggle to do those things consistently and I would struggle to make sure that they happened all the time, plus some time poor. So one of the things I did is I uh, did a bit of a Google and I found someone called the Podcast VA. Her name is Lyndall and I downloaded her information and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. 
um, and she had a really cool little PDF that had what you need to do. And I kind of went through that stuff. And then I went to our CFO, which is my husband, Rod, and said, Rod, uh, I want to do this podcast. I um, am going to do it as cheaply as I can, but I need to have Lyndall and her team help me launch this podcast and maybe even do the first few edits of the first few edit episodes to make sure that this happens. And I think for me, that was quite a major thing. We are quite uh, self-reliant as a business. I'm quite miserly when it comes to spending money because I've been a person that's always spent too much money on things. And so now I tend to be the other way and I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So look, I will tell you right now in terms of equipment, um, this year I upgraded to what most people have as a starter microphone which is a blue yeti um, that is what I'm currently using at the moment I have um, bought I bought the cheapest possible kind of little grid thing for it it's not fancy I've now got like a little desk rig but again it was the cheapest one I could find so it can move around um, but I just use like a 80 or 90 dollar microphone plugged into my computer I use zoom calls um, I'm recording this currently on a zoom um, I've used Loom before, but that doesn't translate well to podcasting. So I use Zoom. And then I'm currently recording in my office, but I have in front of me, I've got like a dead wood, a dead like sound absorbing panel. And at the right hand side of me, I have got a layer, like a wall of clothes that help make that good sound. Now, um, ideally, I would be in a booth or something like that. I don't have fancy equipment. It is not expensive I think and my blue yeti was a couple of hundred dollars but before that literally all I had was my laptop a zoom account and my um hundred dollar microphone I also downloaded a free app called record it and I normally do my intros and outros not today but if I have a guest I do my intros and outros on that and I often do those under the blankets in my bed to get a really nice crisp sound or in my car. My car makes a great sound for a podcast because again, it's a nice and closed studio. So I do that and it's not always perfect and it's not always going to get there, but that's what I do. I have not got a fancy podcast studio like so many other amazing marketers out there. I just for a start, like maybe I'll have one one day and that would be awesome. But for me, I wanted to do what was accessible, what was low cost and to prove the value of it before I spent money on it because there's nothing worse than spending thousands of dollars on equipment and then petering out after the eighth episode, which I was terrified of happening. So that's what I use. During lockdowns or when I was at home, I struggled to get that same quality of sound that I could get here. So I literally walked in and recorded mine in my wardrobe. And I've been a guest on people's podcasts where I'm in the wardrobe. Um, there's no proper, there's no PowerPoints in there. So I would have to drag in a lot, some lights and I'd have to drag in a extension cord for my laptop. Um, and, my, and I'd have it painted, like teetering on a couple of cardboard boxes. Um, and if I moved a little bit, the microphone would fall off. Plus, I had to sit in a really uncomfortable way. And halfway through, I'd generally make my leg would go to sleep. But that is the price we pay, guys, for our podcasting. Uh, so that's what I would do. And, and it's been such a great thing to do. I feel now that when I come into my podcast, it is one of the biggest treat things that I could be doing because I get to talk to you and I get to share and I get to prepare. So that's what I did. I listened to a lot of podcasts. I read a lot. I got the bare basic equipment that I needed and I went and got external help with Lyndall and she was amazing. She helped. I have a virtual assistant. Her name is Judy. She's incredible. And basically, Lyndall had a list of admin tasks, and I went, I'm going to give those to Judy. The other thing that I did that really helped make this work is I have a mega spreadsheet. And for those who know me, this will surprise you because you know that I am not really a spreadsheety type of person, but my podcast spreadsheet has become my major organizational structure. I use it to work out what my episodes are because I'm often working ahead of time or I've got people in the wrong order. So I use that to put my episodes in and plan out where things are to get a nice balance of work. I also have, I created a form. We use Zoho CRM, so I used a Zoho form and all our guests, when they get booked in, 
they get sent an email with thank you for agreeing to be part of the show please fill out this form and then that form feeds into my spreadsheet and it has all their details as their it has their photo of them all the links and everything that I need for me to be able to create everything for the podcast uh, Lyndall helped me with original art for the show we've since redone our art and one of my team members Susanna who happens to be my daughter who's been on the show she redid the art for us this year um, and we use Canva for that um, so we use Canva I use my VA I have my spreadsheet and then we use Google Drive for everything so we have different folders for everything I am so organized with this we have a production folder and in the production folder is what's called the raw footage so at the end of this this will be loaded up into there and then a link to that will be sent to my podcast VA who isn't podcast VA I have an amazing VA called Vera who is an audio engineer and she mixes these now so she does the editing of my podcast I don't do it and the reason I don't do it is because why would I when I could get someone else to do it to a better level so it's professional and it saves me hours so you know I think that people often don't realize that the podcast actually costs us money to do every week um, but it would cost money or time and my time at the moment is better served to use other things. I normally have Fridays as my podcast day. Spoiler alert, I am recording this today on a Tuesday. However, historically, nearly all my podcasts are done on a Friday and that is also the day that my podcast comes out. So I tend to use that as my day to market the podcast, record my post podcast, prep, book my guests, arrange different things and make things happen. And I know that that is the day of the week that I'm meant to do it. So the podcast does literally take a day a week of my time, most weeks to do. Like this is the commitment that I put into the podcast. And I do that because I want it to be something that is a good resource. And I think, you know, previously I was so slapdash with my previous podcast. I just took it for granted. I really didn't understand the cost and effort that needed to be done in a podcast. And I really wanted this time to be something where it's a true gift every week. Um, there are definitely times where I'd probably go back and go, oh, that podcast, or oh, I don't know if it was perfect or whatever. And, you know, but there have been magic moments as well. And I think that that comes from knowing that I've got this day where I can focus on and create the podcast. So that was part of what I did. Uh, we called it Map It Marketing, the podcast, because we already were running uh, Map It Days. Uh, at that time, we were doing something around building a map. At the time, I was writing a book called Map It Marketing, which is now called Be a Spider, Build a Web. Um, so that's a little bit awkward because you know, it was going to all tie together. But we have a Facebook group called Map It Marketing too. So it feels like it fits in really well with that. We have a My Map It Marketing school, online school. We have a store that's starting to have products in it too called My Map It Marketing. So it kind of feels like that fits a brand. We wanted to have it separate from my agency identify because really the podcast is Rachel Clavers. It's, it's mine um, and it does benefit our business, but it needs to be separate from that. So having that separate kind of thing there was quite consistent. So thinking about the podcast name, we definitely wanted to have marketing in it because it obviously helps with SEO and people would know that that's what it's about. Um, do I wish I'd called it Ra the Rachel Claver show? Mm, sometimes, but I feel like also, do I need to have anything else named about me? I, I don't know if I do. So, so but, but I wanted to think about that. One of the things we had to also look at was the format. And this is an important thing, like, are you going to have a show that's just you talking? Uh, it took me a while to slow down when I was talking by myself. I think the first podcast I did, I thought was going to take 45 minutes it was my own one and I worked through everything in 14 minutes because I was hyped and I talked really, really fast. And I probably still talk fast, but I've definitely talked slower. I also um, wouldn't prep enough for those ones. I would assume I'd know what I was doing, but sometimes I'd get lost halfway through and then think, oh no, I'm doing this and it's live. Well, it's not live, but I'm recording it and what am I going to do? And I just walked through. I know other podcasters who would stop and they would have redone it and stuff like that. But that is just not my personality. So um, I've got better at being able to talk more off the cuff, be more prepared. I'm actually working to notes right here. So I'm glancing at my notes. I've had some major mess ups uh, where I think I did one about four, four or five podcasts before 
where I had like 13 points or something and I didn't realize until halfway through that my notes were out of order and they weren't numbered so I lost track it was a bit of a nightmare but weirdly that podcast went really well um so so like the that format between host and guest um I made a decision that most of mine would be it would be like two guests one host it's not always like that I did a hosted one last week this is a host one but generally we do two guest ones one host sometimes we do two hosts to one guest or two guests um, but it means that I have an opportunity to teach and share some of my own insight, but we also get interest in feeding from other people. And that's partly because I'm so dang curious. I really like hearing other people's stories. I love learning from other people. I think my favorite thing is, is that I've been able to have both real business owners and I really wanted that. I feel that as a marketing strategist or even as someone who, you know, our business is you know, as a, as a service-based business and it's got a team talking to people who are solopreneurs or in retail or in different types of businesses or at different stages of their business, you know, seeking finance at a wind down stage. It helps me remember as a strategist, those things and see insights that I may miss because of who I am. So it helps me, but it also means that, that for you as the listener, you can hear other people's stories. And my story is, is going to be cool, but other people's stories are going to do that. So I really wanted to share that guest um, insight there and then also using experts. And sometimes, you know, I feel like I know the topic really well that the expert's doing. But by talking to someone else, it gives me an opportunity to hear their insights and learn. And I have learned a lot. I got into TikTok because... I had Tasha from Jubbly Umph um, on here and she was talking about TikTok and I was like, I'm going to give it a go. And I learned and applied some of the stuff she shared. Um, I have learned from the people, often the people I've asked to be on here are people that I have been inspired by myself. And I think that's the other thing with this, that people often ask, you know, how do you choose who's going to be on your show? Um, for me, I don't get I don't like getting a lot of pictures um if someone pitches to me I need to know that they've listened to my show I want to know that they've listened to a couple of episodes I would expect nothing less if I was pitching to somebody else um, I want to understand why they think that they'd be suitable to my audience which is New Zealand and Australian small business owners I have listeners from all around the world, but in the end, our primary focus are New Zealand and Australian small business owners. So I need to know that they're going to talk to those people. Um, I want to know stuff around whether they're going to share. Uh, everyone, people don't necessarily have to share um, the content, but you know, I've had really interesting experiences where people who've had hundreds of thousands of followers have agreed to be on and said they'd share, um, love the show, tell me they love the show, but haven't. And it's kind of like, well, that's part of the story for you. And then there's been other people who've only had a couple of hundred followers, but have shared vigorously and have loved it and have seen quite huge changes happen because of the show. The numbers aren't the thing to me. It's more just that's kind of that dynamic of wanting to share the content um, so, so, so normally my criteria for choosing guests are um, if they're pitching to me is that they have to have a following um, of some sort that's engaged, like an engaged following, not just like I have 100,000 followers on something or other. They've got to be commenting. It's got to be a community. Um, they've got to be someone who I feel is a benefit to my listeners. Um, nothing that's too salesy. So I don't, like I've said no to so many people who come and just want to pitch something. I want real value, value for you if you're listening to this. And then, of course, if they fit that New Zealand Australian small business fit. And if they don't have that, it's no. Um, if it's someone I'm selecting, if it's someone I want to have on my show, most of the time I care very little about their social media following. Um, I could probably get more listeners on here if I was more strategic that way. But I've never chosen people because of vanity metrics. Um, I just want to have people on here that speak to my heart and then share with you a little bit about that too and maybe I would be a more famous podcaster if I didn't do that and maybe if you do a podcast you might not want to do that either but for me I really wanted to share the delight I see um, I found quite often 
the people I've chosen have never been on a podcast before. And sometimes that's created a bit of tension for them and a bit of stress. But often it's because I'm seeing in them something that excites me. And I think for me, I choose my guests of what I can see in them that I think that other people need to see as well. And that's made it really fun for me. Uh, and I've made good friends out of it. Um, I've, um, I sometimes ask people specifically because of topics as well. And in terms of experts, uh, I've chosen the experts and I would continue to choose the experts who I see demonstrating in Facebook groups, not their own, but other Facebook groups or in social media posts, qualities and values that I share so that I know that it's going to feel like it fits with me. Um, it's going to fit with my audience because their values are similar. At least one or two values are similar. And I think to me, if you're going to have a podcast, that's something that is important to me and it may be important to you as well is to create that. So, um, yeah, so I have a mix of host-led ones and guest ones. Uh, and quite often, you know, I, I want to make sure that the, the guests can feel like their business is being promoted. Uh, and sometimes the, the podcasts go in a direction that I don't intend to. Uh, I have started apologizing before I start a podcast to my guests that I do have ADHD, which means I tend to interrupt people. Um, and it's partly because I will see something that I think needs a thread that needs to be pulled. And I think you know, for me, sometimes we have quite structured questions for our guests and, I, and I'm always thankful when guests, when podcast um, hosts send me questions. So sometimes I do that, but quite often I just have a base idea of three things. And one is what I want people to feel when they experience this podcast. What's one thing I want them to know? And I want one thing that they're going to take away with them. And if my podcast, each session or each podcast can do that, then that's magic. And quite often I'll tell the guests what those things are if I'm organized enough. Um, any of you that have been a guest on my show that are listening going, you didn't do that with me. I am deeply sorry. I do do it with most of my guests, but that is what I would do. Um, and it means sometimes we go in a different um, place. You know, I've, I've surprised guests sometimes with questions because I can feel something in there that I want us to talk about. And, you know, they've come to the party, they've done really well with that. Uh, and that's how I do it. It's not as structured, I think, as I would. Now, I will say that when I started the podcast and the first few episodes show this, I had the intro will be like about the guests and information, then here's the material. And then the outro is always going to be about how you're going to apply this to your own business. And look, I have done that quite often. I do a how you're going to apply, but not all the time. Sometimes I'm like, hey, have a great week because I don't want to feel like it's that formulaic thing. And I and I, I quite like formulaic parts in people's podcasts when they have these routines of this is the thing that we do every week. But for me, it just didn't fit. And it's a real reminder that your podcast can be something that you have however you want. Now, in terms of structural stuff, before we jump into what impact it's had on my business. In terms of structural information, uh, my podcast is hosted on a podcast platform called Omni Studio. And I chose it really, I was given a couple of options. I chose it because I like the way, it, the function of it, had good reporting, um, and I just, I just liked it. So it doesn't really matter what platform you're on, I think. Um, but I used Omni because I think I also used it because I had an integration with a thing called Headliner, which can make little podcast videos. And hilariously, I've never really used Headliner. So that was kind of pointless. Um, but the key thing is, is to then put your podcast on all the other platforms. You've got to register it. And I will be totally honest and say, except for Apple, I did not do that. I got my VA to do it. I had a list. Some of them she couldn't access, so I had to do those ones. Uh, but we just basically put that in and we loaded it up. The other thing is, is that I made sure I had the first seven episodes done before I launched my podcast and we launched with three on the same day. This is to help get a boost 
um, so that people like it, they listen to more, and then that helps with your rankings. And you know, for a good 10 months, I was in the top one to three per three spots on the map for Mapit Marketing on the on Podcast New Zealand and in, in our zone and that marketing zone. I'm now not always there. Sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm down at like eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe lower. Um, and that's just because there's competition, you know, it's in there, but it does pop up and down. It's looking at the average listens compared to everything else. Um, and most of the other ones are overseas ones, except for these, you know, Instagram, which is pretty amazing, is at the top there quite frequently. So, so, so in terms of that kind of like structural thing, um, having it put everywhere is really important. And then I think the other thing is, is putting the time in to publicize it. And I'll be honest, you know, this year I've struggled with this because I've struggled with all my marketing just because I've been busy with other things. Um, but really, you know, pushing the podcast out as part of the job. And it's a hard part of the job to do every week. Um, I, on Friday morning, when it comes out, I'm um, on Thursday, check everything's okay. On Friday, when it comes out, I write a post for LinkedIn and for Facebook and for Instagram. Sometimes I do to my stories on Instagram as well. I don't always post direct to the feed. Um, I will do um, send it out to the guests. If I've had a guest, they'll get the links and stuff. So hopefully they'll share it on their social networks. And last year I had this super awesome routine where I'd use the podcast for my content. So I'd um, use Otter AI and I would transcribe the content and then use pull out quotes and stuff. I haven't done that this year. And it's not because I don't want to help my podcast. It's just I was starting to feel restricted as a marketer and I was going to either have to put hates more regimented rigidity around what I was talking about on my podcast or I would have to change how I did the marketing I didn't really want to do that but I do believe that me doing that for six months really helped push the podcast out I also have a good copy and paste of my podcast and I'll often suggest podcast episodes to people in Facebook groups. This morning, someone asked about value-based pricing. And I said, well, I did a podcast with someone who is a value-based price coach, Natalie Coombe, um, which is to date, I think, our most popular podcast ever. And I said, I'll give you a link to that. And then here's how you get in touch with Natalie. And I'm doing that in a group. And every time I do that, there'll be more people who are looking at the podcast. Um, I think the only thing I feel I haven't done well in is really asking or pushing people more to do reviews. Uh, I Either people just don't like it or, um, and that's why they're not reviewing it, or I just forget to ask. I, I forget to ask for reviews in our whole business. So it's probably the second more, well, hopefully it's the second more than the first. Um, but, you know, asking for reviews, social proof is still really important, but I do get lots of people who, do suggest it in Facebook groups, which is very nice, which means they do like it, I guess. So, um, you know, like that is really important. Podcasts like books or like anything like online courses, it's a social proof that's really important for people to take a risk and listen to it. Um, so that's important. In terms of um, our intros and outros, we bought the rights to some music. Um, I went and listened to probably about 250 different bits of music to find the one that I liked. You can get someone else to do that, but I, I do like to choose my music, so I did that. So that's that's pretty much what you need for your podcast. You just need a simple microphone, a quiet spot um, to listen to some podcasts to get an idea of the style, have a think about what you want your layout to be, intro, outro, and then your main part. I do those in three bits most weeks, and then my audio engineer stitches them together. We don't take out all the breaths and the ums and ahs. We could, but... I like them. I feel that it's organic. It makes you feel like you're having a conversation. I'm not intending for this to be this slick publication where everything is out and tight. Maybe one day that will happen, but at the moment, that's not what I want. Um, so, you know, so thinking about whether you're going to do that yourself or you're going to outsource it, um, that's important, but that's a cost, time or money cost that you've got to think about every week. You need um, a structure. So I've got my templates, having a structure around planning your podcast, having a structure around getting information from your guests. We have a whole lot of emails that we send out around, you know, like, um, hey, we'd like you to be a guest. Here's how we get booked in. Here's what to expect. 
Um, here, can you please fill out this form? All of those are automated emails. Um, I have someone who books that time in for me, but you'd have to do that if you weren't using a VA or an assistant to do that. And then you'd have to think about um, what your organization space is. So, you know, what question are you going to ask questions, um, all those sort of things. There's so much in there that you have to consider to create that podcast. And I do think probably um, it is realistic to think that each show, even if you're not doing the editing, each show is probably worth for an hour, 45 minutes to an hour is probably four to five hours of work in total. Um, when, we're, when our podcasts are done, I write, sh I write the show notes every week. Um, and so those, when I write them, they go to our um, audio engineer and she loads them up with an image that someone in our team has done and the audio into Omni Studio. And then one of our team members also loads the show notes and the image into our podcast, my, my website, rachelclava.com slash podcast. She loads up into there. And then once it's loaded up into Omni, we get the embedded podcast stuff and we put that through into our website so that there's an embed link in there as well. So we do both of those things um, and that's part of it every day as well. So there's lots of these little things that you need to think about. You definitely should be on all platforms. So I see quite a lot of people who go, I'm just on Spotify or I'm just on Apple or Spotify. I think we're on over 40 podcast directories. And that just means that people can find us. I think one of the things that I really enjoy doing was putting my podcast on Audible because it means that people can listen to it if they have the Audible app. So giving people opportunity to find it everywhere is super important. Right. So with all those things and and, and thinking through, um, what impact does it have on our business? Well, um, for a start, I think it's made me a better marketer. So like regardless of everything else, it's definitely made me a better marketer. It's helped me understand other businesses better. I've really enjoyed connecting with other people in my industry and building relationships. And the podcast has been a great way to do that. Um, and then from a business perspective, uh, a lot of people who listen to the podcast, or a lot of people that are coming to our Facebook group now, because we're not running so many events, which is where they used to come from, probably about a third to almost half have come from our podcast, the new members in the last year. So that's, that's a, that's growth. Every week we get more people coming in from that. Um, so in terms of growing us, it's happened. We've had quite a few people who have come to us. Um, I was talking to Tracy and our team yesterday and she's working with a client at the moment. And that client was quoting back um, <laughs> pieces from the episode that Tracy and I had done about e-commerce um, and said that that was the reason that she'd come to us. So we have had clients from it, but and we do measure it. Uh, we do measure where our clients come from. So if they mention that it's the podcast, it's mentioned. So from us as a as a business perspective, it's worth us doing it in terms of reach. It's worth us doing it in terms of new customers. But I feel and I really believe this that if you are running your podcast and your whole focus is that you are missing an opportunity because for me in the end the podcast is for you whether you work with us or not that you would become more open and understanding of marketing principles marketing ideas and possibly try something you haven't before like a podcast uh, so yeah so it has had quite a significant impact on our business and it's had an impact on my personal brand I think and I think you know, for those that are wanting to build a personal brand, which is obviously that's the space that I focus in. So Tracy focuses on e-commerce businesses and that's what her stroke is in terms of marketing and Rachel Calendar and our team focuses on working with those real, really awesome like engineerings and manufacturers and people with sustainable businesses, largest sustainable businesses. For me, my focus and love is working with people who want to build a personal brand. And if that is someone, if that is you, then a podcast could well be in the mix for you. A podcast is an excellent way to, to grow a personal brand. It's an excellent way to show people how you think and how you operate. It's hard to hide your real self week to week on a podcast. You're going to see it come through. 
because you're caught up in conversation, especially if you're with somebody, there's all these unscripted opportunities where people get to see your real personality and they can make a decision around whether they like that or they don't. And I think that's good for business. So why a podcast? Well, I feel like I'm doing an M-I-C-K-Y moment here from Mickey Mouse, but why? Because I care about you and because I care about marketing and I care about helping other people find that. And I think if that's something that's similar to why you would have a podcast, then you, my friend, should have one. I hope that's helped. Um, as I said before at the beginning, do come and be part of the Mapit Marketing Group. If you've got questions about the podcast, you can answer them there. If I've missed something that's a technical thing or something, really happy to show you and give you some answers around that. If you are wanting to get um, more help, we are, you know, eventually we'll we'll sell our all our structure for how to do a podcast. I'm just not quite there yet. Uh, but if you want to, if you want to ask questions or be there, do that. Um, and if you read, if you listen to how I said that I want people to pitch to me and you feel like you'd be a good guest, um, you can uh, contact me on Rachel at identifymarketing.co.nz and we'll see. But please don't be offended if I say no, because I have a very clear structure of what I want to see in a guest, not for you, but for our listeners, because our listeners are important. I hope you have a great week. Next week, we are talking to the um, one of the owners of a business called Little Beauties, who sell the most amazing dehydrated fruit. And I discovered them because I got a gift, an unexpected gift in the mail. And I had to find out more. That's next week on the Rapid Marketing Podcast. If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.